I saw the, the video of the plane hitting the, uh, the second tower. Uh, I'd been working all night. I went to sleep and my, my wife woke me up. I mean, you know, 30 minutes after I fell asleep, but if it's one of those where you don't know what time it is, uh, but it was about 6:45 here, so about 9:45. So one tower is already smoking. Second one hits it, and, and and I don't don't quote me on the times. I don't remember the times, but I watched the second plane, or, you know, fly into the the second tower, or the first plane flying into the second tower. Right, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, and yeah. when I saw that, I, I I just looked at it. I said, "Well, I'm I'm going to war," and uh, not even six months later, uh, I, I went. Right, so you know the guys that went. September 11th, September 12th, in February of 02, they, you know, they're, they're coming out, right? You know, rip them out. And so guys, Rob right. Kerr, Sandy Lopez, uh, Pav, Mike Brogan, those guys were all coming out. And I was yeah. one of the ones to come in and, and, and rip them out. And, and I'm, I, you know, I look at it as uh, I, I went and did that. You know, she, she screwed me out of being a Green Beret. And I, you know, I gave it up thinking I was saving my family. That was, didn't happen. Uh, but I for sure wasn't going to miss this trip. Right. So you know, I get there and, and I, I share this with you. Um, I'm landing on, on the, we land on the airstrip. And uh, in, in those days, right, you did not step off anything that was paved or had the metal sheeting because it was all mine. Right. So, so Hal Sullivan's there and uh, he's, you know, it's like anybody got any dip and so i reach in i don't dip right but i you know mama raised ugly kids not dumb ones so i had plenty of trading stock so i pull out this fresh can of copenhagen and i hand it to him and this guy i mean he got the pinky involved right he's in that thing like he's a proctologist and he's digging around in there and he hold you know and his lips out to here and he hands me this can there's just dust in it right and i'm like no you, you can you can have that out. Yeah, hang on to that. And I says, he says, oh, you know, uh, mouth off. Oh, God, give some money. We go back. And I said, oh, I don't, I don't want any money. And he looks at me and he says, What do you want? Right? Like I'm, you know, like I was gonna ask him to take me in the tent. And I said, Hal, <laughs> easy, okay. I just got here. I just want to go someplace where I'm gonna get some work. And he uh, looks me up and down. And he says, All right, we'll do that sent me to JBAD, which is, you know, at that time was out in the middle of nowhere. And uh, I was the only JTAC for Nangahar, Logman, and Konar province. And uh, you know, Konar was, I mean, shit, shit the corn gall. You, you had to go through Konar, the, 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 what, what is now, you know, easy, easy Konar to get to the corn gall. In those days, I mean, it was all Indian country, right? So, uh, so that one can of Copenhagen was, was worth it. Right. I got to, you know, here's another JTAC, right? They did have a, a, a dude from the two, four was there. Um, a couple guys from dev group and they were basically the PSD for the, uh, for the OGA guys that were at the, at the house, but then they get pulled off for other things. We had, uh, so then I became the JTAC for the, for the OGA. Uh, the precursor to the Afghan commandos was a, a unit called the counterterrorism pursuit team, but a 30 man element that, the Aussie SAS trained specifically to go grab dudes, right? Yeah. And the uh, the SF team that I, I was there with, uh, we were charged with training a hundred man mobile reaction force, and they basically the blocking the CTP team would go in with the Aussies and and uh, and grab the dudes. Right. Uh, I wouldn't say the problem. I would say the issue is the Aussies didn't want to go in without a JTAC. Smart. <laughs> oh, that's me. Okay, great. So I'm with the Aussies and the SF guys are out with the blocking force, you know, completely not happy about that. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, that's the way it was. And then that video that you mentioned at the beginning, uh, the, the, the Brits had, a, had an SAS team there in, in JBAD. And uh, we got some intel that uh, some you know, some bad actors had infiltrated our guard force, our house guard force, right? We had, we had a compound um, that we knocked a wall, a hole in the wall to the next one and knocked a hole in that far wall, the next one. Okay. So we're in this one. The Aussies are in this one. This one was where the OGA uh, asked people questions. Let's just right. leave it at that. <laughs> right. 
Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, so now right here was a mosque. So that's why we never really got shelled at this place. They didn't attack us because they didn't want to hit the mosque. Okay. Um, yeah. So, so, you know, we get this intel that somebody in our guard force is is a bad actor. There's two of them that we're looking for. But then we start thinking, you know, we're, we're, we're getting details of their plan and it, it, it's, it's not lining up, right? Like it doesn't, the, the, the floor plan and all that's not the same. Well, we figure it out. It's the Brits. It's the SAS team. So we tell them and half of their team wants to just kill these guys right now. Right? Just, just, just kill them, stick them on a stick outside. So people understand. Uh, and the other, you know, the other half is obviously like, we can't do that. Sure. <laughs> let's, uh, let's let them go. And the Americans can go grab. Them. And of course we're like, fellas, stop, <laughs> right? You're not, we're not hunting them down. If you've got them, let's get them. Yeah. So we created this ruse where, uh, the Brits would come out to uh, the range that we, that we built out at the JBAT airport. Uh, we had a couple flat ranges there, and uh, they would do basic marksmanship training. Uh, where you know, all right, we're gonna, first we're going to we're going to disassemble the weapons, do a safety check down the barrel because I mean, you, you know, the Afghans weren't necessarily great on, on the yeah, yeah. So, or you know, even cleaning the weapon or whatever. So it's plausible. So day one, they bring four guys, not including the two chowder heads and uh and they you know look down the barrel okay it's clear it's free of obstruction reassemble let's begin and they run through a series of of, of basically zeroing and, and basic qualification okay so those guys go home hey what'd you do today they tell the story here we are the next day the brits show up oh but the americans are here geez we didn't know you guys were here we're like yeah well you know what we're about to take a break anyway you guys help yourself and so the cue was when when Simon, the, the, the Brit team leader, when he looked down the barrel, right, we were supposed to take these guys down. Now, unfortunately for two other dudes, right, just to make it unobvious, they, there were two guys that just happened to be regular dudes, yeah. right? Well, they still got dumped. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so one, two, three, done, right? My guy is, is doing the kimchi squat. So I have to like pick him up to slam him to the ground. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I, I kind of come around him and grab him by the scruff of his beard like this. And, you know, the head does normally follow that. Sure, sure. Right. <laughs> so I'm whipsawing him, trying to get him on the ground. Finally, just reach out and kick his feet out from under him and down he goes. And uh, I'm trying to control him. Right. You know, here's the old cop brain. I'm, you know, I've got a least amount of, of, uh, force necessary to neutralize the threat yeah. well then he picks up a rock so i start kneeing him in the face and i'm telling you bro and you've seen the video yeah. like i'm coming from yesterday and i'm hitting his kids in the face so uh and you know his teeth are falling out like chiclets oh but i did put him in his pocket i did i did do that uh you know i think that's i think that's the right thing to do yeah it's so courteous of you yeah so <laughs> so so we, we we get him we get him uh you know hooded and 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 zip tied and you know we're gonna i mean this dude's tough right yeah. I, give, I give him that this, this guy he didn't say a thing once he was zip tied he was unflappable yeah. uh until he heard the rotors and when he heard the rotors he started kind of shaking a little bit yeah. right and you can smell it right you know chinook coming in you can smell it yeah. and you just mm. Well, even with the the sandbag over his head, I mean, he now he's he's like quivering. Yeah. And when the rotor wash hit him, he shit his pants because oh, he knows where he's going. Yeah. Right? I mean, he's not like we're not taking him to the Ritz. Right. Uh, and uh, so that was one of the pictures I sent you of me at the uh, at the airport with the dude with the hood on his head. Okay. So these guys were in the Hezbi Islami Golbadin, uh, which was you know just a another jihad group. Yeah. Uh, party of party of Islam under Gobadin Hekmatyar, who was their, you know, their leader. Right, right. And they were there to kill kill Whitey, and, uh, and it didn't work out that well. 